Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Victorious Faith Vlog. I'm Pastor Bill Pevlor from Victorious Faith Ministries. In our last episode, I discussed the concept that faith without works is dead. And today we're going to talk about faith in action, kind of continuing along that same line. You know, the act of faith is believing. And if you believe, there will be acts of faith. All right. You know, we're all individuals. We all respond differently to different things. And yet there has to be a response if you are a believer. Go back to Jesus teaching in the temple. When Jesus was teaching in the temple, there were a great number of people who heard what he had to say and believed and, and decided to follow him. And yet there were also a great number of people who heard the same message and they rejected Jesus. See, each person is able to make a choice for themselves. Now, there are always going to be those who choose to believe, and there will always be those who choose not to believe. But for those of us who have chosen to believe, there comes a pivotal point in our faith, and that is the point of action. The person of faith, the believer, is the person who acts on or lives by what they believe, what they believe about God, what they believe about salvation, uh, what they believe about the Bible. So step back for a moment, take a brief survey of your life, and think about what do your actions say about what you believe? In the good times, in the bad times, what do your actions reveal about you? concerning faith. I want to take a look at some examples of people who acted on their faith, who acted in faith, who put their faith into action, if you will. And these three examples I'm pulling out of Hebrews chapter 11. Now there's a, a great deal more that we could pull out of Hebrews chapter 11, but I don't have that much time today. I want you to pay close attention as we look at these three. I want you to see how their belief affected their life by how they acted. Their, their action impacted not just their lives, but the lives of other people when they acted in faith. So let's start with Noah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 says, By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Noah was a remarkable guy. You can read about this in, in Genesis chapter 6. In verse 5, it says that lo, uh, the Lord saw that the world was wicked. Man was wicked and wickedness was great on the earth and, and it grieved God. It grieved him so much that he decided he would wipe out all mankind as well as all of the, the beasts. And he would save one family that was Noah's family. Noah found favor, and it says in verse 8 of, of Genesis 6, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So Noah was favored in the eyes of God while the rest of the world lived in wickedness and corruption. Obviously, this is a very bad time in human history. We know that the time span from when God began to give Noah instructions on building the ark until the floods, the rains actually came, was 120 years. Now, that's a long time to work on a God project with no proof that what you're actually doing is even necessary. Think about that. For 120 years, Noah took on this project. But, but if we look at the scriptures in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, how did he do this? It says, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. In Genesis 6, it said, Noah did according to all that God commanded him. And in Genesis uh, chapter 7, verse 5, it says, Noah did according to all the Lord commanded him again. See, Noah's faith was built long before the warnings about the flood had come. And when God spoke to Noah about a flood coming, when God spoke to him about building this, this huge project, this ark, his faith stood firm and he was able to act in faith on what the Lord was telling him. And he acted upon it long before 
there was any evidence there, there was even a need for it. He remained faithful to God and to his word and to the work that God had given him for 120 years and then even long after the floodgates had been opened. Then let's take a look at another example in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, Abraham's story. Abraham is a fascinating individual. You know, nearly everything, well, not every, every aspect, but nearly everything about Abraham's life shouts man of faith. He is, he is not noted for just a single act of faith, as some of them here are in Hebrews chapter 11. He is noted for many acts of faith. Even, even within the verses of, of Hebrews 11, we find out that Abraham was willing to leave his home and go to a place that God had prepared for him simply on God's word. Even though he didn't know where it was, he didn't know how this was going to work out, he just acted upon God's word. He lived as a nomad in this foreign land, and he raised his children there because God had sent them there. He looked forward, the Bible says here in Hebrews 11, to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Also in Hebrews 11, it says that he believed and was able to become a father not only as an old man, a very old man, but with a wife who was old and had been barren up to that point. And from his seed, the Bible tells us, uh, would come not just one offspring, but millions, billions, right? And then uh, the other thing, when Abraham was tested with his son Isaac, he was willing to lay him on an altar to sacrifice him. Uh, how could you do such a thing? Well, we know from what Genesis said that Abraham held on to the belief. He had a belief that Isaac would not die and that by him would come those many that would form the nation of Israel. He acted on his faith. Even though uh, it was, I'm sure, scary and difficult at times, Abraham was a man of faith, and he put that faith into action. If we go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, we look at another example. This is the, the, the man Moses. Now, even before Moses was a man, we saw faith exhibited by action in his parents. In, in Hebrews eleven twenty three, 23, it says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. So even they started a faith chain. Their family was a family of faith. They acted in faith to save Moses and not, not see him die. So, Moses' parents had faith, and that's exhibited by their actions. And, you know, your, your faith directly impacts your family as well. Your faith isn't just about you. It's about your family. It's about the other people that you come in contact with. Your faith is an important uh, element in the lives of others, not just yourself. This is a remarkable passage of Scripture, Hebrews chapter 11, because if you look at it, you'll find that the people in this chapter who are, who are held up as heroes of our faith were con artists and murderers and slaves and adulterers and prostitutes. And you have to wonder, how did these people manage to get their names listed as icons of faith? Well, it's because they acted on their faith. They acted on their faith. They acted on what they believed. Now, there is nothing perfect about any of them. You know, we, we look up to them, but, but their lives weren't perfect in any sense of the imagination. They were very different people, but they had two things in common. Number one, they believed. And number two, they acted on that belief. According to the dictionary, Having faith or believing is to hold a firm conviction. The men and the women mentioned here in Hebrews chapter 11, they held firm convictions. They held on to the, the conviction that they had and they acted on it. The men and the women mentioned were firm in their convictions so to the point that it moved them to solid action. It was because they did something. And it wasn't because they thought something, not because they held on to a certain doctrine or, or special religious beliefs. That wasn't what was considered faith. No, 
their faith was affirmed because they acted on what they believed. Now, I want you to ask yourself, in the same circumstances, in the same circumstances, could you have done the same? Could you have made the same sacrifices? Could you have taken on the same dangerous situations and, 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 and made those difficult choices? Would you, in their places, have acted on your faith? Could you, like Noah, have stayed with this big boat construction project for 120 years? Could you, like Abraham... <laughs> Could you have laid your son on an altar to be sacrificed? Or, or, or could you even have just left your home and all that you knew and all of your family to go to a place that you didn't even have a map for? Would you have done it? Could you, like Moses, return to a land where you were considered a murderer and then lead by signs and wonders several million people into their freedom? Moses was able to because he acted on his faith. You see, it's not just what you believe. The bottom line is, it's how you walk out what you believe. One of the verses that I always like to, to refer to is in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, first for the Jew and also for the Greek, verse 17. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed <laughs> from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. How are you living by faith? How are you acting on your faith? These three examples that we listed give us encouragement that even in difficult situations, even when we can't really see the end result, we can still begin to respond to God's word. We can begin to respond to his leading and, and follow through acting in faith and we'll see good results. We'll see his results. Hallelujah. Well, that's all I'm going to cover for this session. I hope you'll join us for the next Victorious Faith vlog. Until then, keep acting in faith, keep believing and enjoy the blessing of the Lord.